everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Ray and Joe of BV and Co. And we're talking all about branding and awareness in your real estate investing business. I'm so excited that Ray and Joe are here to uh, share their experience with us and their knowledge. Before we get into it with Ray and Joe, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for both Ray, Joe, and myself. And without further ado, let's get into it. Ray, Joe, so nice to have you guys here. It's been a long time. We've been trying to work out our schedules and get this to happen. So I'm so excited you guys are here with us. Uh, before we get into it, why don't you guys give us a bit of an intro on who you are and what you do as real estate investors? Awesome. Well, Darren, thank you very much for having us. And uh, we appreciate all the work to be able to align on our schedules. We, we know it's taken some time. Um, so I'll start right here. So sure, yeah. my name is Ray Vaza and my wife, Joanna Barrington, and we are BV and Co. And um, we are uh, full-time real estate investors and uh, we're based here in the city of uh, Toronto, Ontario. Um, you know, we're, we're all about uh, some great projects out there. We're, we're doing some burrs and some multifamily uh, builds. Um, yeah, we're, we're joint venture partners. We raise capital. Um, yeah, we're, we're excited to do it all. We've been at this for, I think, two years now. We we started off in about 2018, and um, we've seen a lot of growth over the past year, which is really exciting. Um, but yeah, we're, we've got two young kids. We're doing this. I'm, I'm still full-time at the job, raised full-time at this, and um, it's it's really exciting. We love it. We see this as our future, and it's, it's a business that we're actively building, which is exciting. Let's jump right in. Uh, we're here to talk about branding and awareness and, and you guys are experts in this category. So tell us a little bit about, you know, branding in our real estate and business and, and why that's important to, to what we're doing as real estate investors. First off, it's a representation of values and beliefs. Um, a brand is a culmination of, you know, for Joanna and I, it's yeah. a combination or a culmination of who we are as individuals and really what, what we want our company to be able to stand for. So we sat down and we, we wrote out, you know, what, what's important to us in terms of our values and our beliefs and what do we want to instill into our business? Um, the next one is a, it pre creates an image and, you know, we're visual people in this world, right? We, we attach to uh, visual items out there. We connect with visual items. It helps us to be able to understand what's going on. So as a brand, you're able to put together that image and you're also able to develop a personality. You know, are you a super serious brand? Are you a, a fun brand? Is it a sporty brand? Is it an active brand? You know, um, is it a healthcare brand, right? Is it, you know, whatever it may be, but overall you're able to define a little bit about personality. And I think for us, um, as we were, I remember clearly when we first started, we were sitting on the front porch, we got ourselves a glass of wine, we sat down and we were gonna do the work and we were gonna really like think through this. and. We thought it, we sat there for a long time after the kids were in bed and we were trying to think of a name for our business. And it, we, were, we were thinking of everything, pulling in things from our past and things that were important to us and trying to really instill that so that when people un, heard our brand and our company name, they, they could get a sense of who we were. Um, and at the end of the day, we just said, you know what? I think we're actually overthinking this. So our, our company name is pretty straightforward. B for Barrington, V for Vaza, and Co is our kids. So because at the end of the day, that that is what we're about. We're about our family. And so, you know, for us, that made sense. But it's funny how you, you sometimes have to go through that process, I think, to, to figure out a little bit of how clear, clear you want to be with your brand. Because the first question that often comes up when people are looking at branding is like, do they create a company name and start branding under that? Or do they just go and, and you know, present themselves as individuals? Um, you know, what's your thought on that? And I know you guys have kind of landed, I'm guessing, sort of somewhere in between. Like you've got BB and Co, which is your names essentially, but it is a, a, a company brand versus, you know, um, a personal brand of, of Ray and Joe kind of thing. And, and what's, what was the, the decision behind going in that direction? how we started was when we were first getting into the different communities that we're a part of in the real estate world. Um, we really, you know, we were we didn't, nobody knew us, nobody knew who we were, nobody knew what we stood for. And so we were lucky enough to partner with, with a, a bunch of different people who really provided some great advice, which was get active in the community, let people get familiar with your name. So Ray spent a ton of time being online and just engaging in conversation and supporting other people. And I think that that really helped in terms of 
building our brand and building our familiarity. Um, we then, you know, BV and Co was rolled into that, but mm -hmm. at the beginning, it was really your name on social media that people were seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll say, you know, to your question there, Darren, right? Is it is it about establishing your name, or is it about establishing a company name and then being able to build that brand? The answer is whatever is most comfortable for that individual, whatever feels right for yourself. I mean, you're Darren Varos, but your brand is Darren Varos. So you know, it, it's a great example of you know people know. Darren Varos, the brand, the image of that individual, but they may have never met you. They may never have had a conversation with you. Um, so for us, right, we landed on it because it's not just Ray or Joe. It's a combination of both of us. And as Joe said, it really represents who we are about. We're a family-based you know, company here. We're doing this for ourselves. We're doing this for our children. And it all really builds into you know, those core values and beliefs that we're about. At the end of the day, right, our, our goal and our objective is for people to know the BV and Co brand. We, we want them to really know that brand. And at a certain point in time, they may not know who Joe and Ray are. And, and that's fine. And we're totally comfortable with that. So I think that's why we chose to go the direction that we did. Other things that, that branding does and why is it important, it creates that connection, as I said, with the audience, and it builds familiar, familiarity. So people want to, you know, have an awareness of what you're all about. They want to see you on a regular basis. They want to understand, they want to have that feeling of like, I know Darren Varos, although they may not really know you. Um, it strengthens trust, right? So as we start to build these relationships, we're strengthening trust and it creates, as Joe talked about, recognition in your marketplace. So in the real estate investing world, um, you know, it's a small community and it, it's a community that people really know each other. So, you know, how do you get yourself started and how do you be able to create that recognition in your marketplace so that when someone looks around and they look, you know, on the landscape, it's like, oh, hey, I know that person or I know that company. And the last one is why is it so important is that people want to work with, you know, that people that they know, they like, and they trust. And that is in any business right across the the, you know, across the spectrum. So by doing these things and creating that brand and defining what you're about, you're going to be able to deliver your message and you're going to start to be able to build those connections. That really helps, obviously, in terms of if you're uh, looking for joint ventures or you're looking to do money raises. I mean, people, people, if, if you're looking for funding, people are going to be giving funding to, to those people and companies that they trust and they recognize and that they have confidence that their money will be handled properly. <clears throat> so it's really, really important from that point of view. So if somebody wanted to get started with branding, what is the very first thing that you think that they should do? Yeah, I, I was really hoping you'd ask this question, Darren, because I think now more than ever before, you can get started on building a brand at a zero cost basis. And, you know, previously, so, you know, when I worked in the, in the advertising and the, the marketing world out there, uh, you know, you're dealing with a client and all that sort of thing, right? It's always, you know, charges, 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 right? We're always looking to scale that bill up uh, and keep the revenues running, right? As a person who's just looking to start their business, you don't need to go out and spend thousands of dollars yeah. to be able to be able to start this branding initiative and be able to start your branding campaign. With, with so many available platforms out there, you can start to deliver the message. You know, it can be a Facebook, it can be a social media, a Twitter, a YouTube channel, you know, emails, letters letters, all of these things. And these are really zero cost, um, but they do take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and some creativity around it. Beyond that, I mean, you know, you could do simple things with Canada Post, for example, and send out, you know, direct mail pieces. You could do banners in your neighborhood, you know, those, those lawn style ones that go up. So there's a lot of effective and economical ways to be able to start that process and start to be able to deliver your message and not feel encumbered by, I don't have, you know, a big, big, you know, marketing and advertising budget to be able to build a brand. It, you can start very, very easily and, and economically. We really started on social media. We just got active on social media. Um, I think we got a small order, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, business cards from Vista Print. We got a t-shirt made up, you know, for us to go out in, um, <laughs> you know, at events. Uh, so we got t-shirts, which was all, I mean, I think all of that was under a hundred bucks. You want to be able to present that professional image, especially in, in the real estate investing world. We're dealing with, you know, oftentimes it's individual to individual. We're not dealing with B2B. It's not business to business. So you want to be able to have a professional image and, and show that you've taken some time to give that some thought. So as Joe said, right, even our logo, for example, like our BV and Co., 
we didn't go out to a graphic designer and have that all done. I simply went and picked a font that I really <laughs> liked and put that together. So, you know, again, it doesn't have to be super, super complicated. You can make it um, simple, but yet still be professional. And, and I think that's, that's a great starting point for all of us. The next one we talked about, you know, providing that company, the image and the presence. So as visual people out there, we like to see things and we connect with it very quickly. Um, so, you know, it gives you that, that advantage in the marketplace, um, creates a platform for you to be able to share your message. So, you know, we talked about platforms, but now that you have a, a personal or a professional uh, image and you've got some presence, now you have an ability to be able to speak to your message, talk to what you want to be able to say to the consumer out there. Um, and it allows your business to grow just beyond you as an individual. And then the last thing is, you know, well done and effectively done. That logo and brand can translate across some really great barriers. So nationality wise, it, it can it can reach a lot of different nationalities in terms of that brand and that logo. Language wise, again, right, when we if I posted up the, the Nike swoosh right now, that's a global image that everyone sees and understands. It doesn't take a language beside the swoosh mark to know that that's Nike. And then geography wise, right? You can start to wrap yourself around the world instead of just staying in your own little city or your town or your province. What have you guys seen as the biggest benefits of what you've been able to accomplish so far with your branding? Great, great question on that one, right? I think for ourselves, it is just fast forwarded us in our community in such a way now that we, we've been able to develop this, this strong feeling and this connection of people know who we are. And Oftentimes I'm talking with people and they say, you know, I saw you on the podcast or I was, you know, saw your Facebook post or, uh, you know, I heard you saying this and, you know, I feel like I really know who you are, Ray. And I think that's a fantastic, you know, it, it tells me that I'm, I'm doing things in the right direction here, that, that we're making that impact and we're making that connection. Um, so right away, it breaks down the barriers, Darren, and it allows you to be able to have more and more conversations with folks. We've also been very transparent and very, we've been quite vulnerable in some of these podcasts and interviews that we've, that we've had. And we've, we've talked about the fears and we've talked about the, um, you know, so, some of the, the fears that we've had mm -hmm. and the situations that we've been in as we've been through this journey. And um, that was scary to do, but that was a choice that we made to do that. And, and I think that's helped us in a sense, because I think people hear that and they, they, they do feel that they, that they know us and they, they do because <laughs> we pulled back the curtain. Um, but as Ray said, that has helped fast track us a little bit because as we are in a money raise position, or a, or a partnership joint venture position, um, we can move through that like dating process, if you want to call it that, a little bit faster. And, and you guys are very um, comfortable on camera, on interviews. Uh, you know, you're very well spoken, both of you. Uh, for those people that are not in that situation where they feel comfortable in those scenarios, how do they get their brand out there without... Um, you know, having to be on camera or on a podcast or even posting things uh, on certain sites. We're very always flattered by the compliments that we receive in terms of well-spoken and comfortable and, you know, great on camera and all that sort of thing. Those are wonderful, but I was the shyest kid that ever was, right? I grew up saying uh, my older sister, let her answer all the questions. Uh, you know, I was the kid that cried going to school because I didn't want to be left alone, right? Uh, I was the kid that did not want to speak to anyone all the time. And it's not to say because of what you are right now means that that's always what you will be. I understand that there are levels of comfort for everyone. And we have operated in the level of being uncomfortable for over a year and a half and pushing ourselves in ways that we never thought we would have to, never thought that we could, and opportunities have opened up for us. So what we've really learned is in order to grow, growth and comfortability are not bed partners. They're not synonymous. Um, in order to be able to achieve your goals out there and get beyond where you are right now, there has to be a little bit of a push. So I would say to folks that if you're not comfortable being on camera and you're not comfortable having a conversation with folks, start with talking to yourself. And when Joe and I first got together, um, she she said that I was doing this all the time and I didn't realize it, but it's really corny, but this is who we are, right? When we talk about a brand and, and you know, what we're all about, we're, we're super transparent. Uh, in the morning time, 
I would give myself a pump up speech in the mirror. And you know what? That audience is the guy looking at you in the face, right? Like I would say, you know, Ray, today's going to be your day, man. You're going to go out. You're going to do good things, right? You got that meeting coming up. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. So some positive self-talk, that sort of thing. And for me, that was, I was just like, what is he doing in there? <laughs> what is wrong? Because that? That, that is so not me. I have tried doing those affirmations and I, it's not my bag. I can't, it's, it just doesn't feel natural to me, but yeah. For him, he forced himself to do it and it's paid off. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I've outlined my third point right here. So we'll jump down, right? We talk about what's involved in brandness and awareness right here. So mm -hmm. part of it is, you know, you want to define who and what your brand stands for. So, you know, some simple questions and, and what does that mean? Define it, right? So sit down and ask yourself, you know, what are we about, right? What do we believe in? What's the purpose? Why are we doing this? Like, why do we want to you know, leave our jobs? Why do we want to build a real estate business? Why do we want to have security down the road? Um, you know, and it's not, it can't just be money. It's not a good enough reason. Um, what are the goals? What are we trying to achieve out there? What's our message? What do we want to say beyond just, yeah, we want to build a portfolio and be financially independent. Um, and, and this is the big thing, right? Anytime that you're, you're trying to do an advertising or marketing campaign, it's considering who do we want to connect with out there? Who's your audience? What do they want to hear? What's important to them? It's not yeah. so much about what I, I want to say. It's about what is what do they want to hear? What are they going to be attracted to? What is the message that I can craft that is going to catch their attention? If your brand isn't in alignment with what you're going after, you're right. It, it's not going to make much sense. That's right. And if you're if you're so focused on what what you want to say and what you want people to understand and learn and know about you then you're kind of missing the the whole opportunity which is finding out what people need and what how you can help them i mean that's really been a, a huge part of of what we've been working on as a huge part of our brand which is how can we help others achieve their goals so what are their needs what are their gaps how can we fit in there and fill that void for them um so and, and that's a, a pretty critical pivot in thinking. And I think when you do that, it really helps align what you have to offer. You touched on it earlier. Um, and I wanted to just get your perspective on it because there's so many different ways that we can communicate our message. You have, you know, social media, website, TV. Um, what do you think is most effective right now? Uh, let's, let's maybe say during the pandemic. And then what do you think will be most effective after the pandemic? Well, wow. I mean, really great questions on that one. So I, I put a couple of ones here in terms of platforms, right? Social, website, um, TV, print, digital, emails, letters, and OOH. Uh, OOH just means out of home. So that could be everything from, you know, your lawn signs to a billboard advertising or an A-frame or whatever it might be. Um, so those would be, you know, some different platforms that people consider. TV is expensive. Uh, you know, digital is, is, is expensive because you're paying for, for space there. Um, you know, less expensive, definitely a social, a website, an email. Those are, are very, very low expensive uh, ways to get in. Now, in terms of effectiveness right now, I mean, we're all indoors, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, what I say, go out and invest in a billboard campaign to be able to start your, you know, your awareness out there. Absolutely not. It's the wrong vehicle to be able to deliver your message right now. Um, we're inside. People like visual content. Um, people like, you know, video messages are really, really well received because we can sit there and we can listen and we can kind of absorb it. And it also entertains us at the same time. So where we've put a lot of our focus is on social media mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's free and it's effective and it's real time and you and see the responses from folks. And it's short too. People have a short attention span, right? So, um, you know, with so much information coming at us, you can't go on and have, you know, epically long, um, you know, videos. So I think, you know, Darren, you're sort of the master of the short, video that gives delivers like a ton of content and it's it's really amazing i think what you've been able to do but and i think that you know youtube instagram facebook all of them even tiktok now people are growing businesses on tiktok it's it is really amazing to see and i think in this pandemic so many people have started 
a business from nothing over this past year and you simply purely on social. So I would say that would be, you know, get an account on each of those sites and start. There's also tons of sites about how to build a business on social, right? Mm -hmm. So you can start following those sites and learn some of the tips and tricks if you're not very familiar with them on, on how to, you know, manage your account and um, look at, you know, which videos did well and which didn't and do the analysis. So there's, there's tons of free content out there. I think the last really important point right here, and you know, I've just put a simple bullet point behind it, but it's be consistent. So whatever platform you're choosing, whatever vehicle you wanna be able to deliver your message on and whatever your message is, part of branding and awareness is a cadence of consistency. So you wanna be able to, if it's Mondays at 2 p.m. that you're gonna put your message out there, then make sure that it's Mondays at 2 p.m. Or if it is a, you're going to do it a once a week, then mark it in your calendar and make sure that that's coming out. Because part of what's happening here as we're you know being consistent, we are showing that trust. We're building that familiarity and we're making those connections with individuals because they start to rely on when that message is going to be posted, right? I mean, we, we look for yours all the time, Darren. I'm always looking for it. And there's certain times in the calendar that we're always looking forward to. And guess what? They're there and we know it and we've got the trust that that's going to happen, right? Now, do we know it's going to happen every single week? I don't know. It might not, but we're trusting that it's going to be there because that's been the pattern. So, you know, people like patterns, they like familiarity, they like routines out there. Be consistent with your message. It doesn't have to be long, make it short, impactful, be clear in the message and make sure to follow it up. And then through all that consistency, what happens is depending on how many platforms you choose and how many channels you choose, you can start to measure and see what's really working best for you. So you might, after a period of time, say, um, maybe LinkedIn is not producing results for me, so I'm not going to spend my time there anymore. But man, YouTube, I'm getting tons and tons of results. So I'm going to put a little more effort into there. I really appreciate you taking some time to walk us through, you know, branding and awareness. I think it's so important. It's something that we often forget to talk about when it comes to real estate investing. It's like, oh, you know, you know, what's my return on investment? That's really what investors want to see. Well, guess what? It's not necessarily first and foremost. It is do you have a consistent brand and do people trust you and want to, and want to, and want to work with you? I think that's almost more important than the actual deal itself. So for those people that are getting started as real estate investors, I think branding awareness is first and foremost, the rest will follow uh, as you go. So thank you guys so much for, for taking some time to walk us through this and for being so open and transparent about people being able to connect with you offline. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the session with Ray and Joe, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for Ray, for Joe, for myself. Guys, I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. I look forward to uh, connecting with you guys very soon. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to seeing what's next for you and your business and, and where you go from here. It's been an amazing couple of years for you guys, and I can't wait to see what you're up to next. Awesome. Thank awesome. you so much. Darren. Thank you so really much. I appreciate Darren. the opportunity to come on.